Okay, hey there guys. So in today's video, this is actually going to be a double war. The first one is against one, and the second one is against four Loki. Four Loki is definitely probably the more interesting war of the two. This war, the first war goes pretty, pretty simple for me. Had a pretty good team for this war. I even had a little bit of freedom for one of the fights, actually for two of the fights. And I was happy, I'm happy with the choices I took. This Annihilus isn't anything too hard. It's just got the kinetic transference. It has Power Bond, but Power Bond is ignored by Doom with how he works. And pretty much, I just had to make sure that I got to my SP3 before he threw his. So even though there I pushed him to his SP3, I was doing it while blocking, and so he was throwing his heavy as he got the power. So he wasn't really in the mode set to like throw it. Man, this SP3 just hit super hard. It took off like 20% of his health or something. So that's pretty decent. This war against one goes... I want to say it goes very well, but within the first 20 fights, we had basically already decided we'd won. They were at like 20 fights in and like 6 deaths. It it was pretty obvious from the start that they weren't probably going to be giving it their all. I assume they weren't giving it their all. I, I doubt that this isn't how a typical Masters Alliance plays. I just, I don't think they wanted to try hard and then like lose like a really tight war to us. And... Knowing the score is probably a decent enough call, we don't give up too many deaths, and I know of at least a couple people here who like didn't even boost that hard. For this Black Panther, this is one of the fights I had some choice over on who I could bring. The only issue I had with the CGR was I wasn't sure how well I'd be able to dex his heavy without triggering dex. But right as I get to the SP2 for the first time, I have the power back boost, it's game over. I didn't put suicides on for this fight because I would have only needed them for that one fight, I would have been like turning them turning them on, turning them back off, and then potentially turning them back on, and I didn't want to waste like 400 units. And I was very comfortable doing that fight without suicides. So if you're looking at this Rhino, you're probably thinking like, ooh, does he actually have a good counter? So the counter I'm going to use here is Doom. I've taken this fight before, but a while ago. So this fight used to be, um, what was it called? I think the global was called Protect. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this at the start. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little bit weird. I feel like I've had a stuffy nose since this weekend, like post-nasal drip and stuff. So if I sound really funny, I'm sorry about that. It's just uh, bear with me for the next couple days. Hopefully it clears up fast. Um, but this fight with Protect, you used to take it with like a couple different options, like She-Hulk um, she and stuff. But there was actually a way you could take it with Doctor Doom, which one way was not triggering your SP3. The other way was that you would use your specials as he's dashing in to trigger the intercept interaction which for protect you needed to intercept to remove an extra protection buff that they would gain and for the actual node itself you needed to intercept him with your special to be able to do proper damage so i didn't go for that before this sp3 i have the invul on so i probably could have done it where like i go for an intercept and get hit before my sp3 and it would have sped up the fight a lot but I tend to get clipped by Rhino's unblockable, like, I don't know. It just sometimes doesn't feel like, it doesn't matter how quickly I react, it just, like, I always get kept, caught by it. Not every time, I can dex it, I can get out of the way pretty consistently, but so I just prefer having the safety net here for this fight, because of Sadist and stuff. Typically with Doom, I don't need to go for two Furies in War, but with this fight, I knew I would actually need it. Even that SP2 with two Furies, see right there, I just, I wasn't paying enough attention, I was thinking about other stuff in the fight. So, but here with that SP1, I get the protection off, and I have the Fury, and I get him up here, and so I'm going to launch, oh, I don't launch my SP2. I just need to get up to another SP3, and see there, his unblockable again. That's why I wanted the invulnerability boost for that specifically, because I tend to just get clipped by him. If I, like, make sure I really, really pay attention to it, I can sometimes get out of the way, but sometimes I feel like it always pops up really late for me. It doesn't. It's obviously just like a mental thing for me. I just don't focus on that enough. So that Rhino goes down. I sped that fight up because it wasn't like a long fight. It was like two and a bit minutes. But it's a pretty just repetitive fight. It's just Doom going in and going in and going in. <laughs> so this Kitty Pride here is isn't again a fight I've done in the past. Even like this season I think actually it was. It's a pretty simple fight with Nimrod. You just get up to your, you get up to Blitz mode, get Blitz, and you're just removing her prowess. You're intentionally parrying her to like get extra damage. I 
I keep on making this mistake in this fight. I do it less so in this one. And if you notice right there, that was a nice little thing that I've been trying to pay attention to with Nimrod, is I knew I was about to switch naturally from my modes. So what I made sure to do was that I made sure to swap over to blue with the natural timer so the blue brings me back to my blitz mode. Right, so it's Titan is blue, orange is blitz. So it's swap right before it uh, brings it that itself over naturally. So instead of the natural timer taking me away from the one I want to be on, it puts me actually back on the one I wanted to be on. And so for this one, I just wanted to get the intercept off. And I probably went for the intercept a little bit too early. I should have waited until I was at more like a bar and a half, bar and three quarters of power, let's say. Because here, I know I need to wait to throw my SP2 here so it actually kills. All I'm going to do, I'm going to go for the reparry. And I, tr I don't know how that wasn't an intercept. And now I launch the SP2, takes off. It took off 30% of her health within the first two hits. He's, he's an electrifying champ to play. So here's the score for one more. By the way, I had to wait for Global to come down for those for that section one. It was 31 to 5. They would have had to play very well to beat us. And as I said, we weren't boosting our biggest or anything. So it was a good war by them. I understand an alliance taking this approach. We've been playing pretty well this season for the most part. And this next war would be one of the exceptions. So this next war is probably the most interesting war of the season so far is for Loki. GT40's first real loss, in my opinion, in two seasons. Wait, right, we didn't lose last season outside of the war where we got kicked, I think. I don't know, I might be going crazy. But so it ends 9-2, to two, or 9-10. to 10. We were up by 1,000 seconds on fight duration, so if they had died literally one more time, they would have lost. I watched this video earlier of Karate Mike. He ended his fight against my Venom on 17% health. So that's really tight for like us winning this war. I'm sure there's other fights like that. And for some context for this, this whole weekend I was like gone and I couldn't really be on my phone much. So I like, it's like 11 p.m. and I go to the bathroom at this place. I'm not really supposed to be on my phone much. I pull out my phone, I get to my path as fast as I can and I'm like trying to just get it done and we're up. I think it was four to nine. They had four deaths. They had nine deaths and we had four deaths. And there were still a fair few fights left. And I'm just like, oh, cool, this is in the bag, right? Like, we're GT40, we're not going to give up 10 deaths, that would be absurd. And they're going to die more, they've already died 9 times in the first, like, fair bit. We're usually the faster alliance. So I'm pretty, like, confident going into my fights. I boosted as big as I could, again, I didn't have the most time, so I didn't, like, look for buying boosts and stuff. I only, pardon me, I only had 3 fights. And I'll be honest, when I was going into all of them, I was not worried about a single fight. I was curious how my third fight would go, but I wasn't directly worried about dying in a fight or having an actual issue in a fight. Until I get to the fight. <laughs> so, we lost this war, which, it's a big bummer. For Loki, for Loki is a good alliance. Oh yeah, by the way, for this war, or for this fight, I was told to put on an invul boost, because whenever you nullify him, he gains power. And he has a ton of buffs that he gets here. So I actually did push him to his SP3. If it wasn't for Mystic Dispersion, I would have taken an SP3 there. And there's something so dumb that's about to happen in this fight. Uh, I'll just keep talking while the SP3 is going. See, so yeah, I'm like, yeah, this will be fine. So it's a bummer to lose to four Loki. They played well, 10 deaths. It's nothing to like laugh. It's nothing to laugh about. Like going nine deaths, it's not like. So here. I'm smashing SP2 when this happens. I am absolutely hammering my my SP2 button. Just non-stop, I'm just like, I'm smashing it while my SP1 is going. And somehow he gets his SP3 off first. That is why you pop an invul. And I was like, at this point, I knew I would get an SP3 if I got hit by him and he wasn't going to kill me. So I went for the intercept rather than the SP2 to save a couple seconds. <laughs> yeah, so this is our first loss this season as well. Which puts us at, I'm honestly not sure exactly, yeah, which puts us at 1 and 5 right now. I would have loved to go 0 and 6, 6 and 0, oh my gosh. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble talking right now. I would have loved to go 6 and 0, but it's not like, people lose, right? Mistakes happen. This America Chavez fight, literally a 20 second fight. I just go full, like, 
I had the invul on still, so I didn't care if I hit an SP3 or anything. And right here, she has 9, and she just throws her special and dies. My power stings did, was it 29% of her health, I think? It was an absolutely massive chunk of damage from that, so this fight, again, I'm speeding up this fight. This video is already a little bit longer than my typical war videos because I'm combining two wars together, so it's a fair few fights. So this is Thing with Buffet. So, again, I could be boosted bigger, right? I only have a 10% attack boost on and a 20% um, champion boost, but that's more than adequate to, like, kill literally any map on any fight on the map that's assigned properly so i he has buffet and so i realized he has a decent bit of willpower so at, for a second for, i was using those heavies to build his power so i could get him to 15 rock, rock stacks and a bar of power i got hit there i don't know sometimes i find like when you're dashing back they hit you when i feel like they're not supposed to by the description of dexterity but it's okay so this isn't something i use too often as spider-man is his SP3 actually has a slow. I didn't know it also had a stun, I'll be 100% honest, but it has a slow. So if, as long as I keep my spider sense on, I think is what it is, those little charges in the top left under me, it makes it so my debuffs are paused, and so it's a pretty short slow, it's like a 20 second slow or something, 10 second, 20 second slow, somewhere in that range, I don't remember exactly right now. But as long as I have it paused, it's technically an indefinite, right, it's an indefinite slow. And right here, I'm doing a pretty good job keeping it on, but like, look at his willpower healing. He's still at 100%, and I am two minutes into this fight, just about. I'm a minute 45 into this fight, and he is at 90% health. And he is taking more damage from... He's healing more from the willpower than he is from the ruptures. And right here, I'm like struggling to get a dex to keep the slow on. He's not quite coming at me as much as I want. Now that SP2 hit hard. It was like a 25% SP2, and right then I realized slow doesn't matter. I can keep his... I can control his rock stacks. I fought things a ton without an actual counter. And he's right there. He just wasn't coming at me. And look at that luck right there. I'm like, shoot. So I launched the heavy, and I'm like, do I, do I parry and, like, hit him with his unstoppable, try to build him back up a little bit? Then I realized, wait, hit his block. So I do that, and I get back up. I get my SP2 another 20% SP2. So, 80% of this fight was done in about like a minute, when it took me like a minute and a half or more to do zero. <laughs> so this fight, for the first little bit, I was very, 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 very worried about timing out, but we didn't. I didn't time out there, so it's all good. So I'm deathless still in that this season, so that's fun. This is again just a reminder of the final score of the war. It's a bummer we lost this one. Going one for one on a video is never how I want to do it. I prefer winning all of our wars, but it's going to happen, right? Sorry, this one is a little bit longer. I hope you guys had a good day. Bye. See you around.